There is a thought that's ever ringing in my mind About the love of God and of His grace divine For I was once condemned and doomed eternally Until my Savior gave His life on Calvary Oh, I'm so oh, glad, I'm so he, glad made he made a way for me, for me. Salvation now is mine, now is mine through blessed Calvary. When he was crucified that day, he died my sins to hide away. Now with his blood applied, from sin I'm free. The mighty thunder crashed, the lightning flashed, the veil was rent in twain. When the precious Lamb of God was slain. Then he rose again to prove redemption's plan. Oh, I'm so glad he made, he made a way for me, for me. When I shall view the closing of life's fleeting day, when all the earthly things begin to fade away, I lift my eyes and soar away to realms above, supported by His grace and His redeeming love. Oh, I'm so oh, glad, I'm so glad, glad he, he made a way for me, for me. Salvation now is mine, now is mine through Castle Calvary. When He was crucified that day, He died my sins to hide away. Now with His blood of blood, blood from sin I'm free. The mighty thunder crashed, the lightning flashed, the veil was rent in twain. When the precious Lamb of God was slain, and then He rose again to prove redemption's plan. Oh, I'm so glad He made a way for me. Oh, I'm so glad He made a way for me. Oh, so for me. Salvation now is now His mind through Castle Calvary. When he was crucified that day, he died my sins to hide away. Now with his blood of blood, from sin I'm free. The mighty thunder crashed, the lightning flashed, the veil was rent in twain. When the precious Lamb of God was slain, and then he rose again to prove redemption's plan. Oh, I'm so glad he made a way for me. In Luke, the second chapter, we find recorded one of the few instances of any record of the early life of Jesus Christ. And the incident that is recorded there is one that is common to most families in many respects. Uh, what family hasn't at one time or another temporarily lost a child? Uh, perhaps it could have been in a store or at a fair or some other crowded public place. And maybe it's just that the child wanders off uh, or, you know, they may be seeking some adventure or just looking at something and they wander off. Or perhaps a very busy mother uh, lets her attention be totally captured or centered on a particular matter at hand and uh, she is not snapped out of her trance until she realizes that her child is missing. This story differs from many lost and found stories, though, in the fact that Jesus was not really lost. And it was not just some childish whim that had separated him from Joseph and Mary. On the contrary, Jesus stated in answer to his mother's question that he had to be about his father's business. We read the account in Luke chapter 2, beginning at verse 41. Now, his parents went to Jerusalem every year for the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child, Jesus, tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and Mary knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among the kinfolk and acquaintance. 
And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, Son, why hast thou dealt thus with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that you sought me? Wist you not that I must be about my father's business? And they understood not the saying that he spoke unto them. And he went down with them, came to Nazareth, and was subject to them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. You know, one of the amazing things about this story is the fact that Jesus, the creator of the world, the son of God, went down to Nazareth and was subject to Joseph and Mary. What a great lesson for children today that you need to be in subjection to your parents. No doubt there were many things that transpired during the time that Christ was growing up in Nazareth. Some of them may have been quite funny and others may have been sad or very touching. The inspired writer Luke chose to relate this particular incident which occurred when Christ was on the trip to Jerusalem. There are some valuable lessons for us in the picture which this story presents. And perhaps we may find ourselves in the same condition in which Joseph and Mary found themselves. Perhaps we too have lost Jesus. His presence and power might be absent from our heart. And without his divine presence, we ourselves are the ones who are lost. Consider, first of all, who it is that had lost Jesus. It wasn't some disinterested party. It was his parents. How could this happen? How could someone who loved Jesus as much as Joseph and Mary love Jesus lose him? Impossible, we think. It happened, though. It wasn't the fact that they had ceased to love him, nor some bitter hatred that separated them from his presence. It seems that they had just been a bit negligent on this particular occasion. Scholar, scholars tell us that these groups of pilgrims were constantly going up to Jerusalem during the feast days, and very often they traveled in companies made up of relatives and neighbors. They would begin early in the morning and make a camp before dark in order to prepare the evening meal and rest for the night. Often those traveling together were themselves divided into smaller groups with the men walking along together in one company and women in another. And perhaps this is what happened to Joseph and Mary that day. Each of them may have thought that Jesus was traveling along with the other, and it wasn't discovered until they stopped to make camp after traveling a full day's journey that Jesus wasn't with them. It wasn't intentional on their part, but Jesus was lost just the same. How startling it must have been to them when at the end of a long day's journey, they searched among the company and Jesus was not there. Their suppositions were proven false. All the while they were convinced that Jesus was with them and they felt secure and confident he would turn up as usual at the end of the day. But all of their feelings proved to be just so much fiction when at the end of the day, they took a real assessment of the situation. 
Jesus was not there. Regardless of what they had thought or what they had felt, Jesus was lost. When I read this, I remember individuals I've heard about that left a child asleep on the pew at church. They may have gotten in the car and driven most of the way home till they realized that their son or daughter wasn't with them. They'd turn around and go back and get them. Well, Joseph and Mary were not negligent. They made some assumptions. They assumed he was maybe with the other. But at the end of the day, when they really started looking and investigated and looked closely at the matter, Jesus was not with them. You see, my friend, you do not have to be an arch enemy of the cross of Jesus Christ in order to lose Jesus. You don't have to be immoral or a hater and despiser of all that is good. Jesus may be lost simply through our negligence. Isn't this the very truth which the Hebrew writer expressed in Hebrews 2 verses 1 through 3? There the Hebrew writer said, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? You see, we need to make a real examination of the company with which we are traveling through life. And the question we need to ask about this company with whom we're traveling is this. Is Jesus to be found among them? You see, my friend, you do not have to hate Jesus to lose him. Jesus told a parable in Luke 14 about a man who prepared a great supper and invited many guests. When the supper was ready, he sent his servants to tell those who had been invited that everything was ready and that they now needed to come to the feast. In verses 18 through 20, uh, we read how these guests neglected the invitation. We read, and they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said to him, I have bought a piece of ground and I must needs go see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I go to prove them. I pray, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife and therefore I cannot come. So all of them began to make excuses. None of these who had been invited to the feast were allowed to taste the supper. They were too involved in their own business or their own family concerns, and it was this that caused them to neglect the invitation to come. Dear friend, check among your company today. Have you neglected Jesus because of your own business concerns? As you go about your daily routine of business as usual, be sure that you do not lose Jesus. There are other ways that we might inadvertently lose Jesus. We do not have to be a Judas Iscariot, nor do we have to be a Caiaphas. We can be as harmless as a Felix and still lose the presence and power of Jesus. The book of Acts seems to imply that Felix treated the apostle Paul cordially while he was imprisoned at Caesarea. Felix called for Paul often and talked with him, hoping to receive a bribe from him. In Acts chapter 24, verse 25, we read about one of these encounters between Paul and Felix. And here we read, And as he reasoned 
of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. The fact that Felix trembled as Paul spoke indicates that he must have been deeply moved by the things that Paul was preaching concerning Jesus. But on this occasion, Felix neglected the call of God by putting it off until a better and more convenient time. He didn't blame or curse God. All he did was procrastinate. As far as the New Testament record is concerned, Felix never found a more convenient time. Maybe you are like Felix today. Perhaps you have plans someday to check and see if Jesus is truly with you, but not today. You are waiting for a more convenient place, a time when it will be easier. Dear friend, don't put off another day making a diligent search to see if Jesus is truly with you. If he is not, you need to find him now. But you say, how do I find him? Well, how did Joseph and Mary find him? They looked among their relatives and friends, and when he wasn't there, we are told that they went back to Jerusalem. It is very likely that your search, too, must begin among your family and friends. Look carefully there to see if Jesus is indeed among them. However, don't be deceived by family and friends. They, too, may have lost Jesus. The best way to find Jesus is to go back to Jerusalem. We, too, in spirit, must go back to Jerusalem back to the Father's house, because even today, that is where we will find the Lord, in the temple, doing the Father's business. You see, my friend, we must go back to the Word of God, and there in its pages we will find Jesus as he is doing the Father's will. In the writings of his apostles, we will learn the truth about God's only begotten Son. He will not be found in the opinions and philosophies of men which portray for us man's vain attempts to unravel the mysteries of life, but he will be found in the simple commands and statements which are revealed in God's holy and divine word, the Bible. We can well imagine the relief that Joseph and Mary must have felt when they finally found Jesus in the temple. Their persistence and effort finally paid off. And there he was, seated with the religious scholars of his day, astounding them with his knowledge and his expertise in the scripture. Their great love for the child, Jesus had motivated them to search diligently until they had found him. And of course, when they found him, he was in the father's house about the father's business. You see, we too must love Jesus if we are going to find him. And just like Joseph and Mary, it's going to require some effort and some persistence. And when they found Jesus, he pointed them to the Father and the Father's business. And that is exactly what he is going to do for us today. And that is where he will direct our attention. For wherever the Father leads and whatever the Father commands, that is where we will find Jesus. If you have lost Jesus today, he can be found. 
He is not in the popular opinions of our day, nor is he hidden among the wisdom of our age. He is in the Father's house, doing the Father's will and speaking the words of the Father. Jesus told his apostles in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, All power is given to me in heaven and on earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And so this was the commission that Jesus gave the apostles to go and make disciples, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and to teach them to observe all things that he had commanded. So my friend, have you lost Jesus? When you come to the Father's house, and listen intently to his word with the intention of doing whatever he commands, then you will find Jesus. For Jesus delights to be in the Father's house doing the Father's will. And that's where he desires us to be too as we follow his example. So have you lost Jesus? Maybe just by negligence, not intentionally, but just you got caught up in life. And then when you discovered he was lost or maybe you made excuses, you didn't make a real diligent effort to find him. We encourage you, my friend, if you've lost Jesus, to diligently search for him and you will find him in his word doing the Father's will. Let's go to the God in prayer. Father, we're thankful to you for this simple story from the New Testament about this incident in the early life of Jesus. We're thankful for the lessons that we can learn from Joseph and Mary and how we're very much like them sometimes in uh, our negligence. And we pray, Father, that you will Help us to be equally like them in our, diligently, our diligent search for Jesus if we discover that he's been lost in our lives, that we will look diligently and persistently until we find him. And we're thankful, Father, for the important lesson that we learn from Jesus in this story about doing the Father's will and being about the Father's business. And we know this is always where Jesus will lead us. And that's where we will always find him and where he desires to find us is doing the Father's will. So Father, help us in all that we say and all that we do to do everything in the name of the Lord by his authority and according to his will. We pray, Father, if there are those in the audience today who have lost Jesus, that they will search for him diligently until they find him. And we know that when they find him, they will be doing the Father's will and be in, about the Father's business. We thank you, Father, for the assurance and the hope of our salvation in Christ and his precious name we pray. Amen. My friend, I pray that you are doing the Father's will, that you are about the Father's business, just as Jesus was. Until we see you again, may God bless and keep you. Softly and tenderly Jesus is calling Calling for you and for me. See on the portals he's waiting and watching. Watching for you and for me. 
Come home. Come home. Come home. Come home. Ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling, oh, mercy and pardon, pardon for you and for me. Come home, come home, come home, come home. ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, oh sinner.